This is another interesting situation where a patient who was operated four days ago and implanted with an IPCL which was upside down and reversed was sent to me for explantation. Now this patient has an anterior subcapsular opacity, high intraocular pressure and a very shallow anterior chamber in the periphery. This explantation can be very very tricky than compared to explantation of the normal lens. As you will notice, the peripheral ring on the subcapsular cataract, which has already started appearing within first four days. So since the incisions are not very old, we will proceed to open the original incisions and proceed with the cataract surgery. Uh, we have given IV mannitol prior to the surgery to ensure that the intraocular pressure, which was high, the patient was put on estazolamide and IV mannitol and then taken up for surgery. Once this is done, now we use a 27 gauge cannula to push in viscoelastic very carefully behind the fakic lens. Now, mind you again, this can be very tricky in this situation, unlike an explantation of a normal fakic lens, because here, since the lens is reversed, it is actually touching flush to the anterior capsule. So we instill the viscoelastic behind the fakic lens to separate it from the capsule. As you notice, the peripheral anterior chamber is shallow here. It was stopping the entry of the instrument from the main wood. Now again, enlarging the main wound to approximately 3 mm, this step again would not be required when we are explanting a normal placed fakic lens. We go behind the fakic lens without touching the crystalline lens, go to the middle of the central part of the optic and slowly nudge out the fakic lens from behind the iris and bring it on top of the iris. Once this is done, we will install viscoelastic on top of the IPCL to separate it from the endothelium so as to avoid any endothelium damage and also put some viscoelastic behind the fakic lens now because as the explantation will happen, I don't want the fakic lens to rub the crystalline lens or the anterior capsule. Once this is done, I use my hook technique, which I've described in many previous videos by engaging one edge of the haptic with the blunt instrument and now use a two hand gradual pull by pull. We pull the fakic lens slightly, use another instrument to pull another part and gradually pull by pull technique pull out the fakic lens, ensuring that there is no physical damage caused to the lens as it is brought out because we will be wanting to put the same fakic lens in the patient's eye again. Sometimes if you use a sharp instrument, we may end up damaging the fakic lens or the IPCL, hence we will not be able to reimplant the same lens. As you can notice, there is an interior capsular opacity circular in the center. Now after we have confirmed that there are no marks or scratches, onto the fake lens and it's fit to be re-implanted again. Now we load it in the correct orientation and put it into the cartridge. And once the lens has been loaded in its place, we go ahead and implant the same fake lens in the correct orientation and make sure that this time the alignment and the orientation is correct and finish the case. The only difference here being, since this was a reversed fakic lens which had to be explanted, I did enlarge the incision which I normally would not if it was a normally uh, placed fakic lens and I had to explant it. So here I have enlarged the incision. So we will go ahead and remove the viscoelastic from this eye and make sure that all the viscoelastic is removed from the eye from even behind the fakic lens. We hydrate the main wound and the side port, correct orientation of the fakie cleanse in the toric plane and then we put slight amount of myotic into the anterior chamber ensuring once the correction of the toric alignment is done and you notice that the pupil is started closing down on the eye well. Now we just close the enlarged wound by giving one single suture. And once this suture is given, we embed the knot, cut the knots, and the patient is back to normal.